Like, I don't even know how a person, this, it's just so big and he's tall, but this is ridiculous. Hello, 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 and welcome to the Wool Needles Hands podcast. My name is Taylor, and I will be your host. This is a podcast primarily about knitting, though I do get up to other fiber-related topics from time to time. I am coming to you from Henderson, Nevada, which is a small suburb outside of Las Vegas, Nevada, in the United States. This is where I'm from and where I live with my husband, Brandon, our two boys, Ronan and Angus, and our house cat, Oscar. I am also the owner and dyer of Fiber for the People yarn. You can find both me and my yarn over on Instagram at fiber dot four dot the dot people you can also contact me via email at contact at fiber for the or you can head over to the shop and see what's going on at fiber for the people yourself at www.fiberforthepeople.com if you head over there and you like what you see don't forget to sign up for the newsletter so you can stay on top of all of the good things coming to fiber for the people there is also a ravelry group associated with the wool needles hands podcast you can find it by going to the groups tab typing in wool needles hands a knitting podcast or wool needles hands and you can find us there. It hasn't been a very bustling group lately only because I have been MIA for the last several months. However, I am back now. I have some updates for you guys on all things going on in the Ravelry group or all things that are going to be going on in the Ravelry group. So keep posted for that, but definitely head over there and join the group over there so you can stay in the loop about the yearly Wool Needles Hands Knit Along and all other things surrounding the Wool Needles Hands podcast and the Fiber for the People YouTube channel. In regards to Fiber for the People, there will be a shop update on Saturday, April 4th at 10 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time. You can see more about what's coming to the shop by going over to Instagram at fiber.4.the.people. Follow over there so you can stay on top of all of the colorways coming to the shop, all the new colorways that I dye, and all of the things going on with fiber for the people. That's the best place to go to keep up to date with all of that. Head over there now because I also share my knitting over there as well. My knitting is primarily done with fiber for the people yarn, so I like to share it all in one place. Plus, I do post things from time to time in my stories that are a little behind the curtain looks at fiber for the people headquarters and my dye studio. You can also find more things like that right here on the Fiber for the People channel. There is a whole series of vlogs that chronicle my process for coming up with several of the colors that I bring to Fiber for the People. And what's more, I do have a new vlog series called At Home where I share with you kind of the goings on of my daily life inside the dye studio and outside the dye studio, which has been especially lively lately since this is the only place we can be right now. So definitely be sure to scroll through all of the content here at the Fiber for the People YouTube channel. You may also know that the channel name has changed. It was formerly called the Wool Needles Hands of Fiber Journey channel, but I have lumped it all under the umbrella of Fiber for the People yarn, which is my business because I want to keep it all under that same uh, kind of brand, if you will. Other than that, the content isn't going to change from what you are familiar with, including the podcast, which the format is going to stay the same. Okay, thank you so much for taking the time to stop by and watch the latest episode. It has been some time and I appreciate your patience. There's been a lot that has been going on since the last time that I've spoken to you, um, both personally with my family life, professionally with Fiber for the People, plus the state that we are in right now globally um, is crazy. And I want to address that really quickly before we get started. This is um, today is March 28th. And we are in the midst of a global pandemic with the COVID-19 crisis. And I just want to extend my well wishes to all of you. I am hoping that you are safe. I am hoping that you and your loved ones are well. And I am hoping that if you can, you are staying home. And also, I just want to say to any of you out there that are first responders, um, are medical professionals working on the front lines through this whole thing, Thank you. Thank you for everything that you're doing. So many of my customers are working in the medical field as RNs, as medical doctors, and I can't express enough my gratitude for you and your work and everything that you must be going through right now. So it's important to me that I extend my gratitude to all of you um, it, working in those professions, doing what you can to help us get through this. And to everybody else, letting you know that I am sending warm thoughts warm vibes, safe vibes to all of you. Um, you mean a lot to me. Whether I can see you or not, you mean a lot to me. So I hope that you are well.
Okay, before I get into it, I just wanna let you know that all items, all patterns, all anything really that I share here on the podcast is linked down below in the description box, as well as all of the contact information for me and for Fiber for the People. And also, if you enjoy the podcast or anything that I offer here in content on the Fiber for the People YouTube channel, please consider subscribing. And don't forget to click the little bell icon so that you can be notified anytime anything new is uploaded to the channel. All right, I have a pretty packed show for you guys, so let's get right into it. Believe it or not, we do have a knit along going on over here at the Wool Needles Hands podcast. It is called the Wool Needles Hands Year of Hats Knit Along. Now, if you've been watching the podcast for any length of time, you are familiar with this knit along. It started last year and what it was is we knit a different hat every month with each month having a different theme. I love this idea. I love knitting hats. Um, I love the idea of a year long knit along and I, I wanna keep that year long format because it's more manageable for me. It's more manageable for those participating. Plus it's just a little bit less stressful because there's not such a short time frame to complete something. Not all of us are prolific knitters, me um, included. And sometimes you need a little bit of wiggle room because our schedules can change. So I'm offering up this idea. I know we all love knitting hats, but from April on, what I would like to do is open up the knit along to be the Wool Needles Hands Year of Knits Knit Along 2020. And what this means is that we're going to continue the monthly theme and actually, I don't even think I'm going to make it monthly. I think what I'm going to do is compile a list of theme ideas, and it's not going to be a month to month timeline. You can take as long as you want within the year 2020 to knit your items, but there are going to be themes that you can choose from. So this is kind of how it would work. You have all year from now, if we're just jumping into this, of course, you have all year from this point, which is the end of March, but you have all year to knit as many things as you want to knit for the knit along. But in order to qualify for the knit along, each thing that you knit has to fall under one theme or category. So for example, March was uh, slated in as being knits with beads or little flowers or little accoutrement, kind of fun things that are in the yarn or in the knitting, something to kind of bedazzle your work. So that was the theme for March. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna compile a list of themes and I think I'm going to just keep it to like, I don't know, maybe just like 12 themes. And you can pick and choose from those themes, but you have to make sure that whatever you knit in the year 2020 for this knit along, it has to fall under one of those themes. And that's how we're gonna do it, pretty simple. If you would like to offer some suggestions for themes, I would love if you did that. It makes it a lot easier for me. So just offer that down below in the comment section, some suggestions for themes, for knitting, for designs or whatever. Um, not anything in particular, not like a specific pattern or anything like that. Like perhaps knitwear that has, well, uh, that uses an unconventional yarn, a particular stitch, thing that's heavy in cables. I don't know, something like that. Be creative. And when you knit for the Wool Needles Hands Year of Knits Cal um, or crochet, because that is also included, you just work, you create your project based on that theme. So please help me out. Provide me with some options down below in the comment section. I will put them together. I'll post them on the Ravelry group. Our Ravelry moderator, who is the amazing, just absolutely amazing, wonderful person, Steffi, who is Hootie Knits on Ravelry. She has been so great at keeping things running over on the Ravelry group during this time that I've been kind of away from the podcasting and I appreciate her so much more than she even knows. But she will also be there to answer any questions and she and I will both be kind of keeping things up to date over on the Ravelry group. But in terms of our year long knit along, the Wool Needles Hands Year of Knits 2020, that's kind of how it's gonna go down. I will create um, an additional chatter thread and FO thread for the entire year. You submit your photo, you submit the theme that you chose and any other additional information in the FO and then whatever progress photos you wanna submit in the whip um, or chatter thread. So hopefully that's not too confusing. If you have any questions, just let me know. Feel free to email me, drop me a comment down below. I love reading comments. So please, if you have anything you would like to say, um, questions, comments, uh, just leave them in the comment section and I will get back to you. So that's kind of where we are with knit alongs for the Wool Needles Hands um, podcast. It's manageable for me. I think it will be manageable for you. If it's manageable for me right now, that means that it's just going to be something that I can consistently kind of work with. Um, and that's really important. And my goal 
is to be consistent um, with the podcast, with the Ravelry group, and with the Knit Alongs. So please bear with me, be patient with me. I understand if there's kind of like a moment where you're thinking like, really? Um, But I appreciate your patience and understanding and uh, just uh, have faith in me on this one. (laughs) Also, I forgot to mention this at the top of the episode, but I do want to say that the podcast is going to be, um, I was, I posted a big message on the Ravelry group saying that the podcast was going to be quarterly, um, yada, yada, yada. I gave a bunch of explanation for that. However, I'm, I'm backpedaling on that because I don't want the podcast to be quarterly. I don't want to put it in my agenda as being something I do once every three months because I feel like if I do that, um, that's too much time between episodes uh, and there's not enough going on there to create consistency. And it's important that there has, there has to be like a routine um, and that's what I'm striving for here. So I would like to say that my goal right now is to post an episode every four and a half... Uh, <laughs> four and a half weeks. And I say four and a half weeks because that's like a monthly podcast. It takes me a little bit less than a business week to get it edited and up on the channel. There's a lot that goes into it and I'm kind of a you know picky about the way that it's edited. So I like to take that extra time. So I'm saying four and a half weeks would be the time between podcast episodes. Now, I'm making it like that because I know that should something happen and I need to postpone it, at least it won't be much longer than a month. Um, so it's kind of like shoot for the stars. And if you, you know, don't make it, you'll land or shoot for the moon. But if you don't make it, you'll land amongst the stars. So maybe that's what I'm trying to do. I don't know, whatever. But that's what we're going for here. Um, again, I appreciate your patience. I appreciate your faith. <laughs> and uh, we will we will do this because this podcast means a lot to me. And I have come to learn exactly how much it means to me in the last several months that I have been kind of absent from it. So Okay, all that is to say, um, I'm really happy to be doing this today. So let's get right into business. First of all, before I tell you what I'm drinking, I want to tell you about my mug. So I went to Stitches West back in February before uh, the coronavirus had really um, kind of put our country in the grips of like isolation mode. That sounded really dramatic, (laughs) kind of what it feels like, but it was before all of this started. So traveling was still kind of a thing, but I went to Stitches West, had a great time, got to hang out with some of my favorite people, but I discovered this um, ceramic, now I don't know if you call them like ceramic artists, ceramists, Um, But it is a group of ladies, one creates the ceramics and one paints them. And they are called uh, Jam PDX. They're based in Portland, Oregon. Um, And they just had this mug. And number one, I love the shape of the mug, but I mean, hello, it's perfect. It's um, so as a yarn dyer or a dyer of any kind, you don't have to be just a yarn dyer, you can dye anything Um, or nothing. I don't know, (laughs) an esthetician. It doesn't matter. The point is, is this is a really cool mug and I love it so much because of its like abstract messy nature. Like, look at that. So cool. But anyway, the, um, their company is called Jam PDX. You can find them on Instagram at Jam PDX. I'll link it down below. Um, they make the coolest mugs. They have, you know, knitting related mugs, like just yarn related mugs, all kinds of things. Definitely check them out because they make great mugs and what's even better about this and if you know anything about me um you know that when it comes to mugs i prefer a mug that i can put my hand in to the handle i do not like it when a mug is so tight in the handle that like i can only hold it with like these two fingers because it creates you know myriad issues with your hand it's uncomfortable you get these like red marks on your knuckles it's just not a good thing but i mentioned it to her when i pulled it off the shelf that i was like i love this because i because i can stick most of my hand through the handle and she's like yep it's a four finger handle and i'm like see i knew it was a thing a four finger handle was actually a thing and it's great and she totally understood like my opinion about that so i don't know i love it i love the mugs i love the people Yeah, gotta love that. I am drinking my favorite tea lately. It's actually, gosh, I don't know if I could say it's even more of a favorite than Orange Spice by Bigelow because that's like my my OG favorite tea. So maybe it hasn't quite made it to that echelon of teas for me, but it's it's up there. And what's interesting is it's it's a um, kind of like a therapeutic tea. So it's called Gypsy Cold Care. Now I don't have a cold. the worst thing that I have right now is mild seasonal allergies. And I actually truly believe that this tea helps with that. 
Um, but yeah, it's just this, in the, it says on here warm and comforting and truly that's exactly what it is to me. It's a tea that I feel like I could drink at any time of the day if I wanted to replace my coffee with a cup of tea for whatever reason. It's, it has that like warm, comforting feeling to it if you want it in the middle of the afternoon. It's just an all around great tea. It ha It's elderflower spice, um, which is a combination of European elderflower, yarrow flower, peppermint leaf, hyssop herb, I'm probably saying that wrong, rosehip, cin rosehip cinnamon bark, ginger rhizome, safflower petal, clove flower bud, and licorice root. Um, and I really, really love it. So that's kind of just been my go-to tea lately. Um, I ordered a bunch of it on Amazon because it is also really good if you do have a cold to drink that. It kind of just helps soothe, you know, any kind of irritation or congestion, but otherwise it's just a really easy drinking tea. I don't know. It's just good stuff. So gypsy cold care. So I am very excited about this segment because I have three finished objects to share with you and all of them I love so, so much. One of them I love way more than I thought I was going to um, and I'm not really sure why I felt that way, but I, I love it so much and I think it has a lot to do with the modifications that I made on it, but it is what I am currently wearing right now. This is my modified Felix pullover by Amy Christopher's and I'm kind of like in this weird place where I can't really show you all of it unless I go like this. Um, but I'm going to stand up in just a second to show you. But I just want to tell you that I love this sweater so much. I've knit it twice. You've seen it before. Last year I knit this early in the year. Um, I'll pop a picture of that up right over here. I just love this design. I love everything about it. It's easy to knit, the weight of the yarn, the combination of the yarn and the needle, just everything. It's so great. So if you really need a nice top down, easy to wear pullover, this is what you need to knit. It is called the Felix Pullover by Amy Christopher. She has a pullover. She has a pretty much the identical version, but a cardigan. And then it's very easy to modify depending on your preferences. So this particular case, um, I started knitting it with the intention of making it a regular pullover, but as I got to working with it and as I got to really wanting to wear it, I decided I wanted to kind of speed things up a little bit, especially considering I already had a Felix pullover to wear. So I got to the point where, oh, and I also too decided that I wanted to crop the length of it because I wanted to wear it over high-waisted jeans. So that also cut down on the time it took to finish it as well. And I'll show you exactly how cropped it is in just a second. But then when I got to the sleeves, I tried it on for one of my just regular, you know, trying it on in front of the mirror for fit. And I loved the way that the sleeves capped in her design, the, the way that um, the shaping of the arm at the shoulders, the way that she's designed it, it creates the perfect sleeve cap. And I just um, bound off with a uh, just just bound off and I didn't do any ribbing. I didn't want anything like that gripping my arm. I just wanted it to be nice and kind of loose and comfortable and it's perfect for the design of the sleeve cap. And so like, I'm gonna hold my arms up right here and you can kind of just see that it fits right over my shoulder really nicely and where I bound off all my stitches, it just kind of hugs in ever so slightly and then the way that the sleeve rolls up a little bit, it's just perfect. So it was a really easy modification, shortened the knitting time down by a lot um, and it just, it wears really well. Now, one thing I will say is that I knit this, um, a size that I felt was going to be slightly larger than what the ideal size would be based on the um, the pattern. And so I, I liked that. So this is gonna have a little bit more ease than typical, um, but I love it. So I'm gonna stand up a little bit so you can get in on the yarn. I knit this using Fiber for the People yarn on the non-superwash merino worsted. Um, and this is the deciduous colorway. Okay, so here we are. Um, I'm wearing this with just a really soft spring dress. Um, that has kind of its own high waist that's like a nice loose fit but how adorable is this you guys cropped with this much ease it's just really so flattering um i love it it's so easy so relaxed very comfortable i don't feel like i'm wearing a sweater um it of course it's it's warmer than a typical t-shirt but not something that's so uncomfortable and warm right now considering it's not cold outside and then of course the short sleeves really help with that and speaking of those like look how cute they are capped the way that they are 
with a little roll right here that almost works like a little seam or a hem. I love it. I really can't say enough about it. I just really think it's so perfect. It makes for, and you know, I, I credit the designer with the ability to modify and have it be so nice. I don't know if that sounds confusing, but I feel like to design something that's so thoughtful and um, quality in its design means that it's something that can be modified and still look really great. And that's what I'm, I'm getting here. Like I've modified it pretty heavily. So like I cropped it all the way to my natural waist and then I shortened the sleeves. Um, and I did this right to the point where you would start decreasing for the sleeve. That's where I stopped, cast it off and capped my sleeves. And it's just so perfect. And I'll get a little closer so you can see the color. I sure hope you can still hear me because the microphone's down there. <laughs> um, but yeah, like just how pretty is that? I love this colorway. Yeah, I really, you know, I love the colorway. I love the earthiness about it, but it also has a really nice variegation that makes it colorful, um, but muted at the same time. Kind of like just a jazzy neutral almost. But yeah, I honestly, I don't, I can't say enough about this. I really am so happy with the way it looks. And with a pair of high-waisted jeans, it's really, really adorable. Um, but I really love it over dresses as well. I just, you guys, I'm so happy about it. So that is my Felix. I love it so much, highly recommend it. Of course the yarn, I love the yarn. I love the texture of the non-superwash worsted. I love the way that the colors in the colorway kind of mute and blend together because of its non-superwash nature. I'm just very, very pleased with this. Again, this is the colorway Deciduous. Um, you can purchase any colorway that I offer in my colorway gallery on any yarn base that I offer in my yarn base selection via the sweater quantity option over on the shop site. I will link to that down below and you can check out all the colorways and see if that is something that would interest you so that you can knit your own Felix sweater. But otherwise, you guys, I'm very happy with it. So this is the Felix Pullover by Amy Christophers. Up next is um, really special for a couple of reasons. Um, number one, it's beautiful and it is so just, I look at it and it gives me warm fuzzy feelings. So that makes it special. But also it is my first ever completed shawl. I have, this is the first shawl I have ever knit completely. And it is the Odyssey Shawl by Hohi Locatelli. So here it is. It's obviously, um, it, too big to show you all of it, <laughs> but I will give you a little bit of a look at it after I get done talking about it. I'll show you some pictures that I took a little while ago, but it is so beautiful. I love this design. I loved the ease of knitting it. I just wanted to keep going. I could have gone and gone and gone. I loved it so much. The only reason I really wanted to get it off the needles was because I really wanted to wear it. Um, and even more so after I blocked it. So I know this is a thing. When you knit shawls, they always look crumbly and weird before you block them. They're all kind of like all bunched up. You never know how big they're gonna be. Uh, it's deceiving. But then when you block them, they become this airy, like just so drapey, beautiful fabric. And yeah, that's exactly what happened with this one. And I can't, I can't tell you enough how much I recommend this design or this pattern, um, how much I felt thought went into this. Uh, I know Hohi Locatelli is so well known for the thought she puts into her patterns in terms of the people that will be knitting them. Um, you can tell she thinks about how people will, you know, take to her designs, the kinds of, um, l the language that she uses in her designs. It's just very easy and personable. You can tell she understands the process so well. I don't know. I just, I loved it so much. I really loved the whole 
the whole process. On top of all that, I love the colors. I love kind of the muted pastel nature of these colors. I chose, instead of doing color blocking, I chose to um, kind of like fade or stripe in the colors as I change them. These are, um, this is three separate Lucky Strike colorways from um, Fiber for the People. This is on the BFL DK Weight Base, which is 100% Superwash Blue Face Luster yarn. And the creamy kind of gold undertone to the yarn naturally gives each of these colors like a really nice warmth that I love so much. Um, but yeah, these are three Lucky Strike colorways. Lucky Strike colorways are one of a kind colorways that I sell in my shop. Um, there's a whole article about what they are, how I get them, how they help me maintain a waste free dye studio. You can find that linked down below in the description box. So definitely read about that because Lucky Strikes are very near and dear to my heart and very special, unique colorways. This is created entirely from Lucky Strikes and I love it. I just love the delicate nature of these colors together. Let me show you what it looks like where I kind of striped in the color changes. Um, let's see if you can kind of see it here. Yeah, so right here the color is changing and I've striped in that lavender um, into, or I guess I should say I striped this kind of peach color um, in in amongst this lavender to fade into that. I don't even think anything I said just made sense, but um, that's kind of what's going on there. And I think that subtle transition is really beautiful. I'm gonna get a little closer so you can kind of see it better with these, this part of the shawl here. Yeah, so you can kind of tell that the colors fading in here and there's some fading going on right here too. But honestly, however you wanted to transition those colors, you could get so creative with it. You could do a whole solid color. Um, you could shoot, this is also an excellent pattern for a variegated yarn, something speckled to really not only show the beautiful design of the, the shawl, but also to really show off and showcase a beautiful, rich, variegated yarn. So love this. Um, I have been wearing this I don't think I would ever wear these two things together. Um, but the way that I wear this is just kind of like that. Um, I typically wear it over like a t-shirt or something lightweight or a dress. And I just kind of wear it over my shoulders like this. So that's kind of how I go for, you know, this. And then I imagine in the colder weather, um, in the winter time, I could wrap it around my neck and make it more like, kind of like a scarf situation. I'm not 100% sure how to style a shawl for my own like preference. I probably if I were in like a really cold environment is I would bunch it up really close on my neck like this. Um, something like that. But for right now, considering it's spring and it's not, you know, really cold, um, we definitely do have cool chilly mornings and chilly nights. I think for right now I would just drape it over my shoulders and wear it like that and get really cozy. And it's the perfect shawl for being really cozy. I, I just love it so much. So definitely my hat is off to Hohi Locatelli for such an awesome, intuitive and cozy and beautiful shawl design. Okay, last but not least is my Kinnikin cardigan by Goodnight Day. This is a design that I spotted after watching an episode of the Grocery Girls podcast and they were talking about Goodnight Day. Um, she's a Canadian knitwear designer and um, I just went on to Ravelry and looked up her patterns and I realized that I had um, saved a few of her patterns in my library or in my, um, my uh, what do you call that? Like where you love patterns and you organize them. It's not my cue, but my favorites. And I love all of her designs. She tends to use a lot of really bulky yarn. Um, think, you know, like a Malabrigo Rasta, Loopy Mango, but a lot of Loopy Mango. I know that she does a lot of designs using Loopy Mango. So it's that really um, heavy, super bulky Peruvian Highland wool single ply yarn. That's kind of her go-to. And her designs are really beautiful. Simple, simple lines, simple structure, but just very beautiful statement pieces. And the one that I saw that caught my attention the most was the Kinnikin cardigan. And I wanted to knit it with mohair because I felt like it would be a really interesting kind of added texture to something so billowy and, and bulky, otherwise very bulky. 
Now, it it does call for a super bulky yarn. So in order to accomplish that, I needed to pair some yarns together. So before I talk any more about it, I'll give you a quick look at what I have. And then I'm going to show you some photos after I get done talking about it so you can kind of see it in action. Um, I wore this to Stitches West and I loved it so much. It's, it's a heavier yarn, but it's not heavy in the sense of being warm or dense. It's airy and beautiful and perfect for springtime weather. So here it is. Um, Let's see, how can I hold this so you can see it best? Let's stand up here. So it's big. I wouldn't say it's like really oversized. Um, you know, let's just go ahead and slip it on over what I have on so you can get an idea while I talk about it. Wow, double layers. Okay. So yeah, it's cropped. It has these really beautiful, luxurious bubble balloon sleeves. Um, that kind of nip in just a little bit at the wrist. Really beautiful. So this is it. I'm going to talk a little bit about it and then I'll show you some pictures. Okay, so in order to achieve that super bulky yarn, I took, um, this is Fiber for the People yarn on the Merino Bulky Base paired with two strands of Kid Mohair Silk in the um, Saffron colorway. The Merino Bulky is in the Whimsy colorway. So there's two separate colorways going on here, creating this really beautiful contrast um, and combination of colors. So this is what the main fabric looks like. The orange that you're seeing is only from the Saffron Mohair, and the lighter color beneath that is Whimsy um, on the Merino Bulky base. So this is what I have left of the Whimsy colorway on the Merino Bulky base to give you a little bit of an idea of what it um, what it looks like. It's a beautiful soft um, pink with a gray undertone and lots of really dark um, kind of, I don't know, gritty speckles. It's really beautiful. Um, this isn't the, this doesn't give you the greatest idea of what the colorway looks like because it's, you know, only what's left of my cake, but it is such a beautiful colorway. And then I paired it with this skein of saffron in uh, mohair and the two together I'm telling you it's kind of an interesting combination I guess maybe you wouldn't expect it to look like this but it really is something special so I love the combination of the yarns again it was a single skein uh, or a single strand of the merino bulky with double strands of this and that kind of gave me that super bulky weight that I needed to achieve the design now her designs um, because they are so uh, roomy she has typically like three sizes um, a small a medium and a large or maybe it's a, a size one two or three um, or maybe it was just two sizes um, so anyway, I just went with the smallest size because I'm assuming based on the fact that she only had two sizes that she must be assuming that it's going to fit a range of body sizes. I'm not hundred percent sure. So it is limited on sizes. Um, however, it worked for me. The weight of the yarn ended up being just right. And I love the texture of it. I love the softness of it. It's, it's got this beautiful drape. You can kind of see like the drape as I move it over my hands. Just really, really lovely. Um, and also too, another thing that I really loved about it, and I wore this an awful lot when we were at Stitches, um, it didn't like lengthen. I know sometimes when you have something where the fabric does ha tend to have like a heaviness to it, this isn't dense, it, but it does, it is weighty, um, that it'll cause the garment to grow as you wear it. And this, it was very resilient. And I think a big part of that is because of the mohair, especially the double strand of mohair, added a lot of structure and resilience to what would otherwise be maybe a slightly less resilient fabric because of its weight and because of, you know, just the shape of the design. So all that is to say it really held up. It really just, it wears very well, especially if you're wearing it for a long period of time. It's not overly hot. It's actually, I don't even think I would say it's hot at all. It adjusts really well to the temperature because I did wear it in the evening while we were there where it was nippy outside and it did help keep me warm. But then I wore it during the daytime inside the convention center and it didn't make me hot. So it really, it worked out really well. And that's, you know, the beauty of wool in general. So that is my Kinnikin Cardigan by Goodnight Day. Highly recommend it. Love pairing the mohair and the bulky. I also recommend that. It would, I think it would be equally beautiful in a Surrey if you're not into mohair. Um, probably have to change maybe only one strand of Surrey, I think would do the trick instead of the two. 
Um, but yeah, really, really love this. Because it required two strands of Surrey held. Well, you know, I only ended up using, I don't even think two complete skeins of, uh, sorry, I said Surrey, I meant the mohair. I don't even think I ended up using more than two skeins of the mohair. And then this was four, well, it was three and some change uh, skeins of the Merino Bulky. So this is what I have left, um, which isn't a ton of yarn for such a beautiful and luxurious or generous, I should say, when it comes to sizing um, garment. So really happy with this. So it's called the Kinnikin Cardigan by Goodnight Day. finished objects. I have some items that are soon to be finished objects that I would like to share with you next. So let's go ahead and move on to the works that I have currently on the needles. Okay, I have five things that I want to share with you guys today. Some are in the very early stages and some are in... Uh, not really the late stages, but middle to um, maybe the last neck of, of the project. So I don't know, we're in, in all different stages of completeness, I guess you could say. And I'm not rushing myself to get anything finished, but I do notice that I just have this extra drive to get things done. Um, and that's that feels really great. So I wanna start with you guys um, on a project that's been on the needles for a long, a long time. Um, and I, can't, I don't have any excuses as to why, it's just been on the needles for a long time, but I love it. I love the design, I love the yarn. Um, I just love it. I love the designer. She has come to be a really, really cool Insta friend. Is that what you call these people that you become friends with on Instagram? Um, and it is in my Fringe Supply Company uh, field bag. I have a collection of these. These are my favorites to use because they just, I don't know, just, they just work really well and they're sturdy and pretty to look at. So you'll see that all my projects are in a different field bag. <laughs> so this design is by the lovely Tiff Nealon of Tiff Nealon Hand Knits. It is called the Still Point Sweater and it is still on my needles. It's been here for quite some time, but I've made a little bit more progress since the last time I showed you. So this is knit in the BFL DK, becoming one of my favorite bases, 100% um, Superwash Blueface Luster in the Claret colorway. So that, that is another Fiber for the People colorway and yarn. And I love it so much paired with this design. So here is um, what I have so far of my Still Point sweater. Now I gotta get up a little closer so you can see because the dark color makes it a little bit difficult to see some of the detail here but the sweater has the most beautiful yoke um, with some lace work and bobbles and I hope that you can kind of see it there but it is so beautiful and it's got a rolled neckline and I love it really really love it I have a feeling it's going to wear very similar to the Felix that I'm wearing right now um, kind of a little bit more airy, a little bit more roomy. The fabric is really lovely and I can tell it's going to have a really nice drape. Um, yeah, I just, I want to get this done. Holding it up right now, looking at the color against my skin, I think it's really going to work out. And I think that the neckline, I almost think that that kind of stretches open a little bit when you block it. Of course, you can control that if you want, but I think in the case of this design, you want it to kind of open up a little bit. But I really like this. I really think it's going to be something that I wear often. And the color is so rich and beautiful. The luster that's, you know, in the yarn naturally because of the blue face luster kind of gives it a little bit of a gloss almost. It's really something else. Very special. Um, the bottom hem of this design, which is where I'm at next in the, in the pattern, is going to have that same lace that you see up here. Um, in the yoke. So that's also going to happen here. And then it happens at the ends of the sleeves. Yeah. Pretty, I mean, pretty cut and dry. It's a very easy pattern. Highly recommend it. Um, it is one of her, um, well, it's not one of her newest patterns. This was almost a year old. 
Um, but it is, I think it's one of her more popular ones. I feel like a lot of folks are working on it. So definitely check out Tiff Neal and Hand Knits. Everything's linked down below. Love her, love this design so much. So hopefully, I think I said this in the last episode that I wasn't gonna project when I would have this finished, but you know, um, hopefully it gets finished eventually because I really wanna wear it. Uh, so that's that, that's my still point sweater that's still on my needles. Okay, so this next one I am really excited about because of the combination of yarns and the color that is being created from that. Um, it's just everything about this I love, especially the color. I don't even know if I'm making that sound super complicated. I probably am. But regardless, I love this. And it's very early stages, haven't even divided for the sleeves. I can feel the fibers of the mohair beginning to tickle my nose. <laughs> so I apologize if I begin to sneeze. This is the beginning of a no frill sweater by Petite Knit. And I'm knitting this in two relatively new colors for Fiber for the People. So this is a combination of the colorway Sapphire and the colorway Angel Rust. And I'm using the um, main color or the two-ply. This is Merino Nylon two-ply. That is my Sapphire. And the Angel Rust is the mohair that I'm pairing it with. And what it does when you blend these together is really special. So I'm just gonna hold this on my hand up to the camera so you can kind of see. So that's the combination of the two yarns. Now all of that variegation that you see going on in there, that's only from the mohair because otherwise the solid color, the sapphire colorway, it's not a solid in that there are several layers of color and there are some speckles in the yarn. However, for all intents and purposes, it is this really beautiful, deep kind of teal blue color but it doesn't have any variegation. So everything that you're seeing here is coming from the mohair, which is this. And it's a spectacular effect when you pair something so variegated in the mohair with something so solid and dark, it gives you just such a beautiful fabric. So this is going to become a no frills. And I think that the color is just so beautiful. What an amazing winter sweater, like, or even like a Christmas sweater, just that deep, rich, jewel tone nature of it. It's so lovely. And I'm looking at the picture on the screen and just, oh gosh, I'm adoring it. And I feel like, I love it when a color looks really beautiful with your skin. I feel like we, we wear so many different things all the time. Not everything is just going to fit just right with your skin tone. And so if something really does, and your eyes too, so when something does, it's always kind of exciting. But I really love this. I love what I'm seeing here. And so it, it's, an, it's inspiring me to get to work on this. But I will tell you the reason why I haven't been working on this as much as I would like is because there is something about the combination of the yarn and the needle size that makes me feel like it's it's slow. And I don't know if that's necessarily the weight versus the needle size. Honestly, I guess I can't be sure about that. Perhaps what it is is it's just the mohair that isn't sliding very well along my needles, but that just seems unusual. I feel like it would be the other way around. And these are Chiagu needles too, which I feel like are super smooth, but for whatever reason, it just, I just kind of feel like I trudge through it a little bit more than others. Like my uh, still point sweater, um, the, the yarn and the needle, it just, I fly through it. It's something about that combination of the gauge. Um, it just, I fly through it. But for whatever reason, this, I just kind of feel like I'm trudging through it a little bit. So I just need to kind of bite the bullet and get to work on it because it's not gonna knit itself. Letting it sit here and languish in its bag, it's not gonna make it move any smoother, but I know that that's a thing. I know that sometimes yarn weight and needle size, the whole gauge thing can can have an impact on how fast you can knit something. And that's kind of what's going on here. But I love the fabric so much. Of course, I really want the design. I've wanted a no frill sweater from the first moment that I saw it. Um, so yeah, who knows? I have, I did receive a recommendation from someone though. And I've thought about this and maybe that's why I'm putting off continuing this. Who said to me that she had the same problem with the no frill sweater. So she kind of gave up on it about where I am right now in the process. So I haven't even divided for the sleeves yet. And she started working the, um, oh gosh, Everyday Raglan by Jessie May Designs. 
I'm, I hope I'm not wrong about that. But this is also a very popular pattern. Um, that So Jessie May is a, uh, a not new, I mean, is she new, I guess? I don't know, she's not new, um, maybe new to me. Uh, knitwear designer, she's a size inclusive knitwear designer. She has beautiful designs, lots of very kind of, um, I don't know, a little different uh, kind of sexy designs, very feminine um, designs. I don't know if that's how you would categorize that, but they're very beautiful. And she has a, a top down raglan that's not the same as the no frills, but definitely similar. Um, and somebody said that I should consider trying that because when they transitioned from the no frills to that, they found that it just flew off the needles and they were using a mohair and a, a marine, uh, fingering weight yarn paired together as well. So I might do that. I mean, I haven't made so much progress that I can't just rip it out and start something new. Plus, I'm not working on it now. So what's the difference? So maybe that's what I'll do. I, I feel like maybe I've sealed the deal on that. If you have any suggestions on what I should do, or if you have knit either of these designs, um, or if you've knit the Jessie Mae um, Everyday Raglan or Essential Raglan, I can't remember what it's called. Let me know if you recommend it, because maybe that's what I need to do with this. But otherwise, this is the No Frill Sweater by Petite Knit, and I'm knitting it in Fiber for the People yarn on the Sapphire colorway paired with the Angel Rust. Beautiful. Oh, and of course, this is living in my Fringe Supply Company field bag in the plum color. Oh, this I think this is my favorite one. Okay, this next work in progress is really exciting because I've come to just love shawl knitting and I've come to love Hohi Locatelli because I just love her designs. Um, I've only knit one of them and one and a half and I already love every single one. <laughs> so I whatever maybe I'm not an expert but it doesn't matter I just I love all of, I love the way they look I can tell just that they look so you know comfortable and cozy and I don't know I'm probably you're probably going to be seeing more Hohe coming along the podcast so uh, not Hohe the person Hohe the the designs <laughs> so this is the hipster shawl um if you're gonna knit the odyssey shawl and love it then you're gonna knit the hipster shawl and even more love it because it's worsted weight so it gets done faster but it's also just such a funky cool kind of contemporary casual cool contemporary casual look at all that um design it's you're bound to love it so i have um i've only gotten a little bit done this is where i'm at so far well, I don't know. That's nothing to shake a stick at. I don't even know if that's like a phrase. Is that something you say? But this isn't anything to pour salt on. Is this, this isn't anything to whatever. Look at this. I've made some progress. That's all I'm trying to say. <laughs> so this is my hipster shawl. I'm looking at the screen to make sure that it's not blurry through the holes of the shawl. It's convenient that way. But I'm really excited about it. And here's what's kind of cool about this design. So you see this like part here in the middle, these holes, that's, if you spread it out like you would when you block this, that's a good inch and a half of like width or height, depending on how you're looking at this, of the shawl. And you achieve that in one row, which is kind of cool. So you're doing this. And I mean, the row kind of takes a little bit more time to kind of get that crisscross stitch, but you're getting like an inch and a half essentially of fabric from just that motif or just that stitch and only in one row and i think that that's really cool and i almost wonder if hohi locatelli thought about that when she came up with the design maybe that's something that a person like me thinks about who you know likes to you know get make progress i don't know but i think it's a really cool design element. And then also with the cool like chevron um, pattern, the textural pattern that's happening here with the pearl bumps that's running in between each of those sections with the holes. It's just so cool. Just really, really cool. And honestly, like the whole like hipster vibe is strong with this and in a good way. Like, I don't know if there's a bad way, but in definitely like I, I feel that vibe, I like it for that reason. It does have kind of like a hipster, you know, funky kind of vibe to it. I really love it. Definitely love it. Now I'm knitting this in the yarn that is actually replacing this yarn in my shop. So I love this yarn. I really do. 
But I wanted to offer something that provided the untreated nature of this, but also something that went a step further and offered organic merino. So this yarn now is the new merino worsted, but it is a um, non-superwash, untreated, 100% extra fine organic merino. I discovered this yarn, purchased to sample it, and fell in love with it, the weight of it, the look of it, the hand, um, and then discovered it was made of organic merino. And I just felt like, you know, why not? Why not put a cherry on top and have it be that, you know, eco-friendly uh, wool? And, and eco-friendly in terms of um, being organic, um, being untreated. And, and, and that's pretty much it. Not, not, to, not to say that when you use superwash yarn or non-organic yarn, you're not being eco-friendly. That's not what I'm saying. <laughs> what I'm saying is that if you are looking for a yarn like that, I have a new yarn like that. <laughs> so that's kind of where I'm going with this. And I feel good about it. I love the quality. I love the product. I love having an option for folks who are striving to work with organic yarn. Um, so that's kind of where my mind is about that. And honestly, folks, I've been knitting with this for this long and I love it. Let me get a little closer. If you're watching the new at home vlog series, I talked a little bit about this and I showed you a little bit of a close up of the yarn, but let me give you kind of a look um, at the yarn. So um, this is also in the leather colorway, which oh, the nuance in this colorway, it's a solid, but look at that variegation in tone. It's so beautiful, but this is the yarn. So here it is in skein form. So this is the skein of the new um, non-superwash, untreated, uh, extra fine, organic merino worsted. Wow, that's a mouthful, but this is it right here. It's a substantial skein. It's beautiful. Look at like in both of my hands. It's very plump and full and lofty and amazing. So there it is, the leather colorway, which is also so beautiful and rich kind of like a really pretty cognac. Is that what you would describe that? I mean, I would, I feel like it's so rich and nuanced and it has so much depth to it. You can see these beautiful streaks of like a rosy undertone coming through and then get up there on that yarn. Like look at this beautiful yarn. It's a little heavier than a traditional worsted, not by much, but just slightly, um, even more so than the original non-superwash worsted that I knit this in, just slightly heavier. Um, I don't even really think it's something that couldn't be made up by just maybe going up a needle size or down a needle size. Um, in this case, down a needle size. If you're working with like a, a design that calls for worsted weight yarn, you might not even need to make any adjustments. It's just a hair heavier um, than like this worsted, oh, but it's just so full of character and has you know just enough of a rustic nature to really kind of make you feel like you're working with something earthy and from an animal, but not so much that you might find that it's not next to skin. It's definitely next to skin. Really lovely. There's kind of, I feel like there's this myth um, in the yarn world that non-superwash equals not next to skin or rough or, you know, something that you would consider rustic. And that's absolutely a myth. I'm not really sure where that started. Um, but that's not what non-superwash means by any means. Of course, it's all based on a person's preference. And if you want to know if something is next to skin wearable, you almost need to have it in your hands and put it next to your skin to really know. Because I may think that this is very soft and very next to skin, but somebody who's more sensitive might think that it's just not. However, that isn't because this is a non-superwash yarn. You could argue that superwash treating the yarn removes the cuticle of the fiber, um, removing that grippy nature of the yarn. And that is absolutely true. When you superwash yarn, you remove the cuticle um, of the fiber. If you're familiar with Pantene Pro-V commercials um, or Pantene Pro-V shampoo, and you've ever looked at the pictures on the back and it shows you what a damaged strand of hair looks like. It has all these like layers um, that are kind of like peeling up on the sides and look really awful. Well, that's the cuticle. When you superwash yarn, you remove all of that. And what you're left with is a very smooth fiber. Um, when you remove the cuticle, you remove you remove the resiliency of the fiber and you remove a little bit of its durability and warmth. But this amount can be in many cases negligible. And some would even say, but by removing that, you're making the yarn more smooth. 
and I'll give that to you if that's kind of if that's what you're thinking superwash yarn is soft because the you know it's just a softer yarn and non superwash yarn is not soft um, or it doesn't have a smooth hand like okay if that's the way you're gonna look at it perhaps however when we're talking about next to skin wear um, and how the hand of something feels primarily what you're talking about here is the breed of the sheep the type of wool that you're working with for example a blue face luster wool is already a, a wool that has a higher micron count than something like merino so it's going to have a little bit more of a rustic nature so that may be less next to skin for certain people whereas merino has a lower micron count so you're looking at something that's going to be softer but it's the fact that it's merino um, that makes it really great for next to skin knitting not necessarily the fact that it is superwash or non superwash. So all that is to say, I'm not really sure where the whole if it's non superwash, it's not next to skin, or if it's non superwash, it's not soft started. Um, but that's not necessarily the case. What, what, whatever you feel about that, whatever your opinion is, um, let me know. I'm interested to know what you think about that, what your experience has been, because a lot of what I just said really, I mean, is based on your experience and your preference and all of that. But it does kind of, it, it is curious to me that there is this myth that non superwash yarn tends to be more rustic and more, um, I don't know, rough or bitey. I just don't think that's the case, but let's move on. Um, this was the Hipster Shawl by Hohi Locatelli, which I'm loving so much. I'm keeping this in another fringe field bag. The tartan plaid. And I think it looks really good with that color. So that is going off to the side and we have two more projects. One is actually a hat design that I will be bringing out into the shop soon. Okay, so before I talk to you about the new hat design that I'm working on and while we are on the subject of the organic merino worsted, I want to share with you this project that I'm excited about because it is not for me, it is for my husband and it is the first project that I am working on since the last project I made for him, which was wait for it this monstrosity of a cardigan i don't even i can't even hold this whole thing up for you it is so enormous you couldn't i could put this thing over my entire body it's that giant like i don't even know how a person this it's just so big like my husband is a big man he's six five He's slender, but not so slender, and he's tall, but this is ridiculous. And this is what's even worse about this. And a long time ago when I was pregnant with Ronan, so this is a while ago, I did a vlog where I showed this on me. And one of the most alarming things about this is considering how big it is, and I almost feel like what I'm seeing in that screen is deceiving. Like, you guys, this is enormous. This is just out of control. I can wrap this around my body like three times. So big, so hot. But considering how giant this is, look at how much I tried to take it in to like make it fit reasonably. Um, that that whole thing that you're seeing right here, all of this that I'm holding in my hand is added like fabric that I tried to take in this whole section right here to make it fit a little bit better. You guys, it's absolutely, it's nonsense. And other than those fancy ass buttons that I have on there that I spent a lot of money for, the sweater is going to charity for somebody who may fit it. I'm probably gonna keep the buttons and replace them with something else and then put it in for charity or donate it or whatever because there's gotta be somebody out there that can use a really warm sweater, but it's not my husband and not in that size. So, and that was a while ago, <laughs> that was, Gosh, I want to say I, I've been knitting since 2009 and that was 2010 when I made that and it took me a long time to make it. I knitted in pieces, obviously. I had to seam it together. It was just one of the, it was like that first big item that you knit after you learn how to knit that just ends up being a disaster. Well, that was it. So I told him that I'm going to make amends and now that I have some experience under my belt and some, you know, actual evidence that I know what I'm doing that I would knit him something. And this is what I have so far. It's not much, I know, it's 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 not much at all because I just started. But this is going to be the Rift Pullover by Jared Flood for Brooklyn Tweed. I love this design, I'll pop a picture up so you can see what it looks like. It's really nice, clean lines. It has a very casual, kind of simple, 
you know, raglan look about it, but with enough detail to make it interesting. It's bottom up construction. It's essentially knit in a one piece with a few areas of seaming. So it is simple in that regard, but I really like it. And I love, um, and I love the yarn that I'm using for it too. So this is that same yarn. This is the non superwash organic merino and this is a new colorway that i dyed just for his sweater and this is called neat n-e-a-t kind of like um, a whiskey neat and i really like it let me show you what this looks like um in skein form and oh i love this color it's very similar to the dress that i'm wearing and i feel like paired with deciduous like how pretty would that be so here they are i have a bunch of them but this is the um organic worsted in the neat colorway and it's really beautiful i ooh, i really love it so much like i feel like i what sweater would i make with this any sweater because i love this color and i feel like it would go really well with my eyes who knows but look at that there's lots of depth to the colorway um this is made from a combination of four different colors with a beautiful gray undertone and i love it and I think in the sweater, it's going to be that really nice, you know, um, casual, but it can be dressed up uh, color that he could wear. He teaches. He's a high school teacher, so he could wear it to school. He could wear it casually. Who knows? But I think it's going to be really great to have something for my husband that isn't so giant, you know, that he and I could both wear it together. So that's going to be a really great uh, period of redemption for me. Um, as I make progress on this and show it to him and say, look, see, I can actually knit you something that will fit you. So that is the Rift Sweater by Jared Flood for Brooklyn Tweed. I know I don't have a lot going on with it right now, but I will. I'm actually planning on working on some of this tonight because I want to get past the ribbing. I feel like once I get past the ribbing and I'm working on the body, it's like off to the races. We'll see. Okay, so what inspired me to do this was the fact that I had four skeins of yarn in my stash um, that were stacked up with one another and they were so beautiful together. And it was unintentional the way that I put them in my stash, but the way that they were stacked up in there, they just looked so stinking beautiful together that I couldn't help um, come up with something to use all of them together. Now, I'm gonna have to apologize because my cakes are absolutely out of control. Okay, so let me get this in such a way that I can share it with you. Here it is. Now, it's not finished yet. I have to top the crown off. I haven't decided if I want to do any more color work on the crown, um, but this is what I have so far. And I'm a little disappointed in my color work knitting. Um, I feel like it's puckering just a little bit, but as I work it with my hands, I'm noticing that it's smoothing it out a little. Um, so we shall see. But here we go. So this is the design and the color combination is really beautiful. So I'm using um, three different colors here, or four different colors. It is the leather colorway, which is this beautiful gold. It's the same color as what I'm using on my hipster shawl. And then up here and in various different places in the design, this is the sapphire colorway. And then these little, um, <clears throat> right here, these little arrow kind of, half tri or you know triangle type situations that's the onyx colorway which is like a kind of like a black it's pretty much what it is and then the base color the background color is espresso roast and i love it and i feel like yeah yeah the contrast is definitely kind of almost um like subtle i guess the differentiation in colors doesn't just completely pop out at you but when i saw the colors together I knew that was going to be the case, especially in the case of these two, because they are so close um, at first glance. You, you know, like I pop it up real fast. It's like they look like the same color. But then when you start, um, then when you start seeing, you can tell this is more blue and this is a black or like a gunmetal gray color. So I kind of knew that going into this, that there was going to be that aspect of the color work, that it wasn't going to be, um, you know, super standout contrast. But I didn't care because I thought that that gentle contrast would look really cool. It would give it kind of a, I don't know, like a luxe, rustic, expensive vibe. That's what I would think for all these colors. They're so, you know, luxe and rustic. And they do, they have kind of an expensive look about them. And just look at this mess. Oh my lord. The Merino Bulky Base is gorgeous. 
but sometimes the yarn cakes don't hold up very well. And it probably has something to do with the way that I'm pulling from them. Let's just pretend like it, it looks fine. <laughs> so this is the espresso roast color. This is the main color, the one that's in the background. And this is the leather color. Now this is interesting because this is leather on a superwash yarn and this is leather on a non-superwash yarn so you can see the difference in the color between the two. Um, it's much more saturated here, much more even uh, coating and kind of a little bit more muted over here. Both beautiful. Kind of an interesting thing to see. So leather, onyx, and sapphire. This is absolutely stunning. And it's such a knittable color as well. So all of those together, I mean, I really couldn't help but do something with them. I mean, despite how messy they look right now, which is really out of control, they are very beautiful together. And in the finished design, I'm really happy with that. I kind of think that I'm going to finish it off at the crown with just the sapphire color and not do any additional color work. And then allow the pom-pom to kind of bring in all the other colors um, up there. Not 100% sure, but I do want to get this finished because I would like to get this pattern released into the shop um, by the end of April. Because if you've been watching the podcast since the most recent episode back in September, I had other um, hat patterns that I wanted to put into the shop. I'm planning on putting them all into the shop at the same time at the end of April. So bear with me. I know there's the Douglas hat, the gambler hat, and I'm not sure if the gambler hat had, if I had shown that in the last episode of the podcast, but I know I showed the Douglas hat. Um, but those are going to be coming to the shop. There are The patterns are essentially done. Um, I just need to get them finalized and published. So that's where I'm at right now. And that's kind of how I want to do this is to have this and those designs all together in the shop as a little bit of a hat collection um, all at one time. So keep posted for that. I will post more on Instagram about all of this. Um, so definitely head over to the Instagram account so you can stay on top of all of these things um, that I've been sharing with you here, plus all of the new yarns and then any designs that come to the shop. You can keep on top of all of that at fiber.for.the.people on Instagram. Okay, that is all I have right now on my needles that I'm working on, that I'm engaged in at the moment. Um, I plan on, a f I have a few patterns in mind for things that are upcoming, things that I would like to work on, um, but nothing is set in stone. So this is kind of where it's at right now. Um, and hopefully I make some significant progress on some of these by the next time we chat, which is in hopefully four and a half weeks. And then also that um, no frills that I'm working on. If you have any suggestions about that, or if you can give me any feedback about your experience with the Jessie Mae top-down raglan sweater that's very popular right now, let me know because I do really think that's the direction I'm going to take with that because um, I keep seeing it on Instagram and it's beautiful and it does have a little bit more of an open textured fabric than maybe that one does. And I don't know, maybe that's the direction I'll go. But yeah, any suggestions are welcome. You can let me know. In the meantime, let's go ahead and move on to the last segment of the show. This last segment of the show is a new way for me to share with you some of the things I'm really loving, whether they be acquisitions or things that I've had that I've just started using again um, in kind of a small scale. So I'll only share one item with you um, each episode in this segment, but it will be one thing that I'm really loving at the current moment um, that I want to share with you or that I want you to know about. And today, um, kind of strangely, I, you know, I'm sharing this with you and because I really do love it. However, I really don't have much of a place to tell you to go if you wanted to get one for yourself because the company where I purchased this or the company um, that makes these, they don't have a website. And from what I hear, the only place that you can get them are at knitting trade shows or just trade shows um, on the West Coast. It, that's kind of what I've learned because I've done some research to figure out more about this. But um, yeah, so bear with me. But otherwise, I do really love this. And I love, you know, the style of it, um, the the pattern of it. And I just wanted to share it with you because it is something that I got when I was at Stitches um, in addition to my cool coffee mug. So that is my Saraba African Art tote bag. It's like a bucket bag. Um, it's so cool and beautiful. And let me um, let me fasten this so you can kind of see exactly how how it goes here. And it has a zipper 
which is nice. It doesn't have any pockets on the inside, but it is lined, um, but no pockets, which I mean, when you're a mom is a little tricky, but I have this insert that I put into my bags that kind of has all the essentials in it. So I just put that into any bag that I'm using, but this does have a zipper and that's kind of way, the way that the little flap kind of latches down to the bag. So yeah, this is my Saraba African Art, which is the name of the company, um, bucket bag, and I love it. It's got such beautiful leather detailing. They're all handmade. You know, I don't have, they didn't have any business cards. They just had this really beautiful display um, at Stitches and really beautiful pieces. They had rugs and they had bags and they had those really beautiful African market baskets that we like to store, you know, our yarn or our knitting projects or whatever. Um, that's that's what this vendor was um, was selling mostly. And this was hang, it was like one of the last days of the convention. I walked by and I had walked by several times during my time there. I hadn't seen this, but it was like hanging out in the front all by itself. Um, and I couldn't resist it because it's so beautiful. The striping, the color, I love it. I just love it so much. And it, the straps are nice and long. So, you know, if I stand up, let's see. Oops. You can see kind of the straps are nice and long so it wears down low. So it's not like right underneath your arm here, which I feel like because of the fabric might be a little uncomfortable. So yeah, it's very, very cute and comfy. So I'm really loving this right now, Saraba African Art. I would, you know, urge you to see what you can find out about the company. I couldn't find anything on Instagram. I asked some folks and they didn't know. I couldn't find the website, so I apologize. But you may be able to find something similar by Googling, you know, um, African woven tote bag, Saraba African Art tote bags on, you know, Google or what have you. Let me know if you find out anything, but otherwise, Love this. Reminds me of Stitches West. Reminds me of the last time I really went anywhere other than, you know, my neighborhood um, before we were all in isolation. Um, so I am just really loving this right now. All right, guys, thank you so much for taking the time to hang out with me here. That's all I have time for today. But in the meantime, if you'd like to watch more content here on the Fiber for the People YouTube channel, definitely check out the at home vlog series. It is a new casual vlog series that takes place both in the dye studio and also just in my home here with my family while we stay socially isolated um, in our homes during this very strange and unusual time. Maybe it can brighten your day, provide you with a little bit of um, relaxing, carefree watching. You can also watch any of the vlogs that I have chronicling my dye process and of course go back and watch previous episodes of the podcast. Whatever it is, there may be something here for you. I appreciate you taking the time to hang out here on the channel. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe, hit that bell icon so you can be notified for new uploads. As always, thank you so much. Until I see you again, which is hopefully in the next four and a half weeks. Happy knitting, happy crochet, happy whatever it is that you're doing. I will see you soon. Bye.